Uh, we've got a couple other lights to look at. If you really start getting into professional style quality, we can meet your needs. So we've got a great fisheye lens. Now we have a 4500 lumen light. Um, it has a large chip on board. It does have the light sensor to it. There's a setting or a rating called CRI that stands for Color Rendering Index. By definition, the sun is 100%. This is 96% of the value of the sun, of the color of the sun. So we're going to push this on. Builds all the way up to 4,500 lumens, so you're literally taking the sun underwater with you. The light that goes around the power button is your battery indicator. So right now this is 50 to 75% charged. So we've got uh, 4,500, 2,250, 1,125, 660. We tap it again, and then we've got our automatic setting to it. This light retails for 699. I just had a guy down in Cozumel with two of these on his rig, and his pictures, his videos are incredible. They are National Geographic uh, videos. As a matter of fact, he was on Sharp Week a couple years ago. Anybody see the episode where the shark kind of crop dusted the people while they were in the cage? Drove by, he was acting real funny, and he just took a huge dump. That was his camera. Okay, I digress. <coughs> so it's just um, a lot of light. <coughs> I'm sorry. A lot of light. Yes, a lot, a lot of light. light. 9,000 lumens total. Um, we do have this little guy. It's a 900 lumen light. Um, again, with the light cannons, if you compare a 40 watt light into a lumen setting with eight D cell batteries, put out about 485 lumens. It was about this big, about that big around. It was heavy. So this little guy is a sixteenth of the size. It has a 900 lumen spotlight, a little bit of a halo around there, so you have a little bit more field of vision, but your main spot is great for looking at different things, pointing things out. Uh, we tap this again. We're going to go down to 450, and then 225. If we tap it again, once again we get a signal flasher. Tap it again, we get SOS. If people had been using Sea Life lights, we wouldn't have had open water. Um, this little light is going to use two CR123 batteries, burned for about 70 minutes, uh, 140 minutes, or 280 <coughs> minutes. Or we can use rechargeable uh, 18650s. If you do that, you get 100, 204 minutes worth of burn time out of these. We sell the light without any batteries to it, retail for $79. So if anybody's looking for a great primary light, uh, this is a good, really good one. Uh, we do have a system that's set up with a 18650 battery and a charger that retails for $99. Uh, you guys have sold a, a lot of these lights, really solid little lights. Um, take this off, we just unscrew this. Batteries will just slide out, lubricate the O-rings on the outside, put in a new battery, tighten it back down, and you're all set to go. Has anybody ever gone bioluminescent diving? Ever heard of bioluminescent diving? Okay. If you're underwater and you wave your hand in night dives, if you wave your hand or in a cave or anything, there'll be these little spots of light all over the place. It's little organisms underwater that when they're stimulated and start moving, they'll glow. We can get the same effect by applying a light source to them. And I've got some day glow style items here. Now this is just going to be a reflectivity aspect of it. It's not going to be the true bioluminescence, but it will give you a feel for what is going to happen. So first off, I'm going to have a yellow filter. that when I want to see if there's anything bioluminescing, I'm going to put a yellow filter over my mask. If I want to take pictures or photography or video, I'm going to put a yellow filter over the front of my camera. What I'm going to do in the meantime is hand this to you. Can we turn out that other light, Sherry? Thank you. 
Okay, so first off, we're going to have an 800 lumen, 14 degree spotlight. So I can be using this on my night dive. I'm nav drive, diving along looking for something. Yeah. Hmm. Wonder if there's anything bioluminescing over there. If this is too bright and I'm scaring the fish away, I can actually go into a 400 lumen light. If I see something, I said, I'm going to go check and see if there's anything bioluminescing over there. No cheating, don't put the mask on. So I'm going to go into my crash pad hippie days, and it looks pretty cool with the blue light coming on here. Now put the yellow filter up. It's like what you see. Yeah, it just uh, it takes out the blue color from the light and accentuates all of the things bioluminescent. So this is actually stimulating the creatures underwater to bioluminesce. And now you can start taking pictures and videos of the bioluminescence. Well, just like the old days. <laughs> the 3D poster or something like that. Yeah. Is the pyramid going up or is it an yeah, elevator shaft go. going down? But the, I think this is, gonna, cool. this is going to put the impetus back in night dives. When so many of the certifying agencies stopped requiring night dives for advanced certification, light sales and night dives went right through the floor. This is going to stimulate everybody to get back in the water and start doing night dives. I'm going down to Cuba April 18th. I can't wait to get in the water with this light. So that's some pretty cool stuff. Any questions on bioluminescence at all? Here comes a real light. Okay, so this is going to have the hard grip, the full size tray, so we could put a DC 2000 on here. We'll include the yellow. Uh, mask cover, the camera cover, an orange strap. It comes inside one of the uh, uh, semi-crushable boxes. Retails for $4.99. That's a pretty good price to be able to do something unique like that. Most people that uh, take you on bioluminescent dives will charge you 70 bucks for a one-tank dive. And you follow around one guy, you've got the yellow filters, and they have one person with the light, and you're looking to see what they're using. So if you want to really be in control of your own night dives, have the lights available for that as well. Are there bioluminescent stuff everywhere or just in certain areas? Um, we're finding more and more things are bioluminescent. We're finding crabs are bioluminescent. There's some sharks. Uh, any place, um, St. Thomas should have a good one with the reef system down there. But uh, any type of uh, live coral reefs and you know, anytime there's beautiful colors, there's a good opportunity. And it doesn't have to be just for night dives. We are finding, um, you know, in swim throughs down in Cozumel. There's things that are glowing you can still see in the daylight as well. Now, one of the real cool things about this is if I'm going to go do a night dive and I've got my camera set up and I'm all ready for, for a night photography, we've always had a spot up on top of the camera called a cold shoe mount. And it used to be in the days before we had video cameras or uh, uh, digital cameras, we'd put a sport finder up there. It was a little square with a circle in it, where if you look through it and you didn't see any moons or crescents or anything else, you were lined up with your, your picture. So otherwise, you'd be using the sport finder to try and figure out where your camera's pointing. Never really had a feature for it, so we developed what's called a cold shoe mount. So now I'm just gonna put this up on the top of my camera, tighten it down so it's nice and tight. Why we have redundancy. Okay, so I'm going to put the cold shoe mount in the top of my camera. I'm going to put the light directly on top of that. Now I can go do my night dive <laughs> with white light capabilities. If I want to check for bioluminescence, I turn this light on, put my yellow filter down, put my filter over the camera, turn these lights off. Now I've got everything in one compact, easy to use system. So, the director said, how do you want this camera system to work? I see some smiles. <laughs> <laughs> we got the wheels going. So, it's uh, really a lot of very clever engineering. I've got an engineer out of our factory in New Jersey that I just see and applaud every time I see him. He's a very, very clever guy. Um, in order to haul all this, we have a 
see my pro pro photography backpack. I think we're coming. Uh, first off, on the back, it's got very nice padded shoulder straps and a cumbar, uh, lumbar region. It's nicely padded, so it's very comfortable. We also have a sleeve on it, so you can put it over the handle of your pull-along luggage if you don't want to wear it as a backpack. Uh, TSA is getting funny again, so they want you to take anything bigger than a cell phone out. So what we're able to do is reach into our handy-dandy iPad, MacBook section and keep our uh, laptops and iPads easy to access. Uh, nice felt in here, nothing's going to get scratched up. There are water-resistant materials between the different panels, so if something's put in here, it's not going to seep from one panel to the other. Now, the bag is not waterproof because we have large grommets in the bottom to accommodate draining if we put wet product, uh, wet camera systems, or anything else in here. So that's the back of the bag. On the front, we have a small pocket that is great for uh, keeping passports, room keys, money, anything else inside of here. Uh, none of these pockets are waterproof, but they are uh, a good storage space for it. This is what I call the media center, and this is where I'm going to store all of my charging cables, my SD cards, my batteries, everything else will go inside of here. We have uh, charging trays, everything stored away into a nice configuration. The main compartment is going to have Velcro adjustable partitions to it. So now we can set everything up. So I have my camera, I've got my uh, strobe, photo video light, fisheye lens, all my grips, trays, arms, flex arms, everything else goes in this middle part. And I'm able to carry everything in one bag that stays with me. Uh, it was designed to hold the Pro Duo set, but will also fit into most regional overheads or underneath the seats. So it's a very, very compact, easy to use bag as well. Um, my boss had an experience, he was down traveling, and of course the guy who was sitting beside him was talking about his photo system. And he had the 50 pound Pelican bag and he was hauling this around, spending $100 to ship it one way. And he got to his destination and they were standing at the luggage <coughs> carousel. The guy says, oh come on, i got to show you my camera system. Opened it up, camera was gone. Mm. They would broken in and taken the camera out of it. My boss reached into his backpack and says, huh, what a shame, here's my camera system, mm -hmm. I'm, going, I'm going diving. And, uh, you know, just stayed on the plane with them. But I was probably out, you know, $2,000 camera system, uh, plus the fact he couldn't take pictures for the week. So, um, again, very small, very compact. If we take a look at... An eight and a half piece of paper. I'm going to take my camera system. system in an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. That's pretty sweet. Um, any questions on any of the products we've just looked at? Any question you mentioned about the spot of fog in the beginning mm -hmm. and the case. Could you go over that again? Yeah. From the air conditioned room to the regular? Yeah. Uh, again, when you put your camera inside the housing, put it in a nice air conditioned room away from humidity. You'll put a moisture muncher that's in that little silver packet. I've got, I think, three of them in there. Um, you'll put it in that little clip up above, put the camera inside the housing, close it up inside the room, <coughs> and you should be good for the better part of a day, day and a half, depending on how humid it is. And then uh, take it out. If it's turned pink, um, put it into the handy-dandy, what was the Have a dry. Have a dry. Have a dry. <laughs> Walmart. I mean, an Amazon, sorry. Amazon. Um, cheap. Because if you don't, if you if you close it down at the boat, you just captured all that hot, humid air, and then the battery's going to heat up as the battery's running, and it's going to cause fog. The cooler water. The fog is going to be uh, the cool air is going to be right at the front of the barrel, and it'll be a dime-sized piece of fog. Okay, so so if you put the good. moisture muncher in there and put it in the room when it's nice and cool, you should be okay. Okay. 
Uh, eventually, it will hopefully burn out, but you, you know, that's when you see your whale shirt or something. <laughs> um, you know, also, uh, one of the things with the camera system is very, very versatile. And quite often, when you see those cover shots on the cover of magazines, these photographers went into the water looking to capture that shot. They had their $15,000 camera system all set up so that they could get this picture of people underwater. If they've got this system set up and a whale shark comes along, they can't take any pictures. They're just going to watch it go right by. By having these external lenses that we can just pop on the front of the housing, we're able to go from super macro down to one inch out to our uh, super macro or super fisheye lens and be able to take pictures of shipwrecks or whale sharks or anything else with it. So you can go back and forth between the systems.